Good news. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed, and, moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. Again it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations, to him the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. When I was younger, I loved comedy sketch shows like Monty Python's Flying Circus, The Two Ronnies, Not the Nine O'Clock News and The Fast Show. I still remember many of the catchphrases and punchlines and I annoy my children by repeating them endlessly. One recurring sketch was of a French philosopher musing on the meaning of life. In the tradition of 20th century French philosophy, he had a rather depressing outlook. In one episode, he sat staring at half a glass of milk. Then looking into the camera and in a gloomy French accent, he asserted some people look at half a glass of milk and say that it's half empty. Other people look at half a glass of milk and say it's half full. I look at half a glass of milk and say it's sour. In today's passage, we're led to ask how we view our faith. Are we glass half full or glass half empty Christians? Are we the people of hope and optimism or of fear and cynicism? The film critic Mark Commode points out that the most memorable film reviews are not those that are glowing and positive, but the ones that are acerbic, biting and critical. He lists dozens of these reviews, from the review of the Flintstones that simply said, yabba dabba don't, to the review of Vampires Suck that stated, Vampires suck, but this film sucks more. Nothing sells better than bad news, he concludes, as he inverts a popular saying, good news is no news. Increasingly, good news is no news is also true of society at large. We have an inclination towards cynicism, distrust and scepticism and we often revel in bad news. Our news channels are not full of uplifting events that happen daily in our communities, but rather of disasters and crime. Our tendency towards revelling in pessimism and negativity seems to have developed hand in hand with a loss of hope in our society exacerbated in recent years by political upheaval and a ruthless pandemic. Hopelessness, despair and malaise are some of the most damaging elements that we face today in our society, politics and faith. Yet Jesus inspires us to open our eyes to the good news and hope that still exist all around. Many of the hymns that we sing in churches come from a time when life was so much more taxing than our lives today. Still, these hymns continue to hold on to a message of joy and expectation. The slaves who wrote and sang the African-American spirituals, despite the terrible hardships they faced, never lost that sense of hope in their songs. Similarly, many of the celebrated reformers of the past century have been rooted in Christian hope, and their struggle never led them to cynicism or hopelessness. The great civil rights campaigners, for example, were inspired by dreams of future equality rather than being shackled by nightmares of their present situation. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness, wrote Archbishop Desmond Tutu. In our church nativity one year, my eldest son was given the job of holding placards with the words good news and bad news on them. The congregation were encouraged to shout, pass it on, pass it on, when he showed the good news placard and oh dear oh dear when he showed the other placard unfortunately he got a bit confused and ended up lifting the wrong placards at the wrong times so the congregation ended up shouting pass it on pass it on when bad news was given and shouting oh dear oh dear when good news was announced too often we fall into that very trap as we pass on any bad news that we hear and become cynical of the good news 
We need to step off that treadmill of pessimism and show that we are people of new life, hope and resurrection. Even our word gospel, which comes from the old English words God meaning good and spell meaning news, makes it clear that we are a faith of good news, inspiration and transformation. We don't need to see things as half empty or half full. Rather, we are called simply to open our eyes to the promise and hope all around us. The most potent threats to both our society and our churches are hopelessness and cynicism. Once they catch hold, they spread like infection and isolate us from light and life. As we concentrate on weaknesses we perceive in ourselves, in our churches or in the wider society. Today, open your eyes to the good news all around you, whether on the TV news, in newspapers or in the lives of family or friends. Commit yourself to being a person of hope.